Tonight, brothers and sisters, grace and peace, we have to talk about, we've been talking about it. It's been on me and we born in a battle zone. If you're a black person in this country, then you have been faced with many situations that could have led to George Floyd. You have been faced with many situations where you could have got the call that the Floyd family got. The Castile family got. The William Bell family got. The Trayvon Martin family got. The Eric Garner family got. You've been there. The Rodney King family got. The Breonna Taylor family got. The Ezra Ford family got. The Darius Stewart family got. The Troy Robertson. The Junior Prosper. The Levante Briggs. The Harris Pickett. The Betty the Betty Jones, the Randall Wilson, the Janet Wilson, the Michael Noel, the Tyro, the Tyree Crawford, the Patterson Brown, the Lamont Jones, Alonzo Smith, the Michael Lee, the Quint Quintino Legrea, the, An the Antrino Scott, the Perkins, the Kevin Hicks, the Mary Truxillo, the Demarcus Seymour, the Alton Sterling, the Paul O'Neill, the Stephen Clark, the Christopher Mur Murphy. You've been faced with it. So do not let people, white America, pretend like they don't know because they know. It's being done by their friends, it's being done by their relatives, it's being done by the U.S. The police department, it's been being done. And we're going to look at it tonight. Because one of the worst things for somebody to do to you is to gaslight you. To act like, I don't know what's going on. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't really understand what's going on. I don't. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? They're making you explain them yourself and explain yourself. And they're the orchestrators. They know exactly what's going on. In these riots, there have been, you saw, white allies. Yeah, because there's always going to be allies that break ranks. When we came out of Egypt, there were allies. Some of the Egyptian uh, midwives said, we're not killing them. No, we're not part of that. Because they feared the Lord. So there are always allies. There have always been some allies. They're far. And they're few. But allies take action. Definitive action. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters. And thank you to all the supporters. All those that email. All those who are sending in their love, their aid, their support, their blessings, and are writing those excellent, beautiful emails. My goodness. The Lord bless you. Let's talk about what's happening amongst us and that's affecting our heart and our mind, what's going on, and the pain that we're suffering. Let's look at what's happening and, and, and this continual migraine that we're facing in this life. You know how it is? Get your pens, get your papers. We're going to deal with the knowledge that is relevant. The knowledge that is significant and that is, has a demonstrable bearing on the matters at hand. Relevant knowledge for the relevant time. For dealing with what? The love of the relevant God and the relevant Christ that's ruling in relevant daily living power. Let's talk. The silence of lambs that erupted into protests, into riots, into fires, over the long chaos and destructions that have subjugated our people in this country. It's been long and people pretended as if they didn't know what's going on. While Everyone was talking about returning from the quarantine. The quarantine being lifted. Let's get back to the gym. Let's get back to drinking. Let's get back to the bars. Let's get back to partying. The black man in America knew has been reminded over and over with George Floyd 
Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, that we're going to get back to oppressing you. And that's what caused these eruptions. This is not a surprise to the U.S. government. This is not a surprise to the authorities. That's why they have officers trained in riot gear. They are aware that when people are disenfranchised, when they're abused, when they're killed, that many times in the history of the country, of this country, of the United States of America, that killing of innocent people, where the police department plays judge, jury, and executioner, it has erupted into riots. But the knee on the neck of George Floyd hit and caused the dam of the emotions to finally break. They broke because they were ignored. They broke because they were not being heard. They broke because they are constantly under attack. And God is hearing because I was moved Brothers and sisters, this is Brother Karadazar, and my mind is so full. My heart is so overwhelmed. There's so much I want to say about this topic. So I have to pray to the Lord and ask Him to guide me on this heavily. And He said to me, Christ said, I'm coming light into this world. The he that believeth in me shall not abide in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When He's saying He's a light into the world, because you need light to really see all that is involved. You need light. You need spiritual understanding. That's why Christ said he was going to die. And when he died, the Holy Spirit will come and guide you into all truth. So I'm going to bear witness with you, brothers and sisters, about my learning. And share with you so that you can get some comfort. You can get some assurance. And you know that this case... It's going to be taken up by the highest court, by the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God going to judge this whole case because it's been going on too long. The white man in America, what you find with the white governments and the authorities from the history of this country, what has happened here is it's in the face of everybody. People who did not want to talk about it, now they're forced to talk about it. And what happened in this country, they have been overcome with evil. Christ warned mankind that you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And many people that are in positions of authority, they are well aware of these evil influences coming upon them. And they yield to it, and they enjoy the practice, and they enjoy the pain, and they enjoy the crying. And you can look at many of the reporters that are reporting on the George Floyd. Listen to them and you watch. There's a smirk on their face. You can see like a, there's an inner enjoyment. They can't. They said, I can't really feel what you're doing because what happened to them in, when, with all the murder and the massacring that they have witnessed and sat by, what happens, you come to a point, as it says in the book of Ephesians, where you are past feeling. Where you're only dealing with cognitive empathy. You don't have the compassionate empathy. You can't feel for your fellow man. You don't see that you're supposed to be your brother's keeper. Because there's nothing stopping the U.S. government, the judges. There's nothing stopping them from putting this situation to rest that's been smoldering for hundreds of years. If you want the people to stop rioting in the, in the country, you have to come down from your judges' seats and from your authority and show them the love and show them the care and show them the concern and bring in the repair. And you have to acknowledge that the pain that they're suffering was put upon them by you, that you're responsible. You have to give account because you're creating psychological and spiritual damage by acting like you don't know what's going on. That is the sign of a deeply sadistic people. That you're hurting people and your victims are crying out. All the people throughout the world are talking about this. And in them talking about it, they even come. Other nations are standing with the black man. Why? Because they have witnessed it. 
or the reporters. They've always been on the side to do the history of what whitewashing it, of toning it down, of changing the narration, of deflecting, of projecting, blame shifting. That's the side they've been on. So we're going to look in the word. Because God said he declared the ending and is in the beginning and the beginning and the ending. And what God is showing us clearly in his word, his word going to stand. This woman, this, these our people, we're going to see the redeemer. Because there's a role being played. Somebody's playing the oppressor and somebody's playing the oppressed. And Christ is going to play the savior and many people are going to be hurt. So there's no excuse. You can't say you didn't know you heard the crying. Now let's get into the word. And I'll say grace and peace to all you brothers and sisters. It said the law came by Moses. The grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. It didn't say the grace and theology. It said the grace and truth. The reality. Not theory. The reality. The witness. What's going on came by Jesus Christ. Christ said he that hated his brother in his heart is a murderer. And the reason why the cops end up killing people and killing my people in this country because they're carrying hatred in their heart and they do not understand when you're carrying hatred in your heart, only thing Satan got to do is move on you. Easy. It's easy to make you a murderer. Because you're walking around as a willing participant, a willing slave to evil because you have no, no reason to hate us. We're going to show with the hatred of the police department and the municipalities because there is a form. This, was, this is all a social construct. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 4, verse 1. This time's when my daughter said to me, Daddy, don't say nothing. They might kill you. My son said, Dad, shh. The cops pull you over. And they put their hand on their gun after they give you the ticket because you're asking them a question to threaten you, meaning you keep talking, that I will shoot you. That's a reality that black men face in this country and black women face and children face. But they made it that way. But let's look at this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 1. So I returned... And considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold the tears of such as were oppressed. So, God is known. He knows. Look at what it's saying here. So I returned and considered. So you can't act like you don't know. Solomon was a king. In authority. He said he returned and he and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter. They had no relief. They were constantly abused. They were redlined. They were Jim Crowed. They were given false, false covenants. The restrictive covenants. Let's see what went down in this country. The FHA lie. They were written out of the New Deal. They were not part of no Marshall Plan. They were mocked after Reconstruction. They were left to wander in these cities. Vagrant laws was made against them. There was no comfort or there was no relief. So can we look at the word oppress? The word oppress, I considered all the oppressions and we're going to deal with all the oppressions. But brothers and sisters, we need to look at something. This is 2020. I want you to walk with me and take a step back to 1919 to the Red Summer. And when you go to see the Red Summer, you're going to see that ain't nothing really changed. You're going to see the Red Summer was after the Spanish flu. And you're going to see in the Red Summer, the people were being, our people were being killed in this country. And that it was augmented. It was incited. And then Woodrow Wilson, who was the president of the United States, he 
fomented, he incited the hatred against black people with his presidency. So you know president could sit down, the 45th president, Donald Trump, and you don't know, you know what the presidents have done. The presidents have the one that have incited the hatred and the killing, and they have not stepped to it and shut it down. Okay. To oppress. It means to put pressure on. To crush and to burden, to overwhelm. It's borrowed from an Anglo-French word, oppressor. Borrowed from a medieval Latin word, oppressare. Frequentive derivative form of Latin oppressus, past possible of opp oppressimere. To, hear what it says, to press on, to stifle, and to overpower. So the word oppress, when you get into the root wor word, it says to press on, to stifle. So the knee upon the neck was I'm taking the life out of you. And the officers that were there, they were charged yesterday. They were there, we are in support of the life being taken out of you. And what people need to understand, Philando Castile was killed in Minneapolis when he was pulled over. Yeah. And it went to trial. They said we want due process. And what happened in the trial? Not guilty. Senator Klobuchar, that was running for president, she wanted the nomination. When you go look at her record, they tell you where she was at, that she did not indict and bring charges. She did not bring charges against any police-related killing because there was a game that they played in this country. And the game that they played is that to make ourselves, to deflect from us, just give it to the grand jury. Although we have the evidence to charge, no, we don't want to charge. That's why they were giving it to the grand jury. So what you need to see, brothers and sisters, is not just the police department, it's the judges. It's not just the judges, it's the senators. It's not just the senators, it's the presidents. The presidents. It's the congressmen. Meaning this, they know what's going on. They want us to live under constant threat and they don't understand. What they're doing is they're obeying the evil. They're obeying their envy. They're obeying their lust. Instead of them wrestling to do what's good, they're just yielding to the, to the spiritual wickedness. They're yielding to the, to the pride. They're yielding to the anger. They're yielding to it. So Solomon said, I considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. So on the side of the oppressors, there was power. That's why you see, a few weeks ago, during the quarantine, there was an officer in New York City that had his, that had his, his, his knee was on somebody also. Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm have the authority over your life. This is all oppression. And all you officers and you people that are in authority, you need to know you playing the part of the oppressor and God is going to deal with all the oppressors without a question. Many of you are calling his bluff. You're going to find out you can't call God's bluff. You're going to see the Lord told you, brothers and sisters, to have the word. It, the Lord told you what to do. To take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You have to step to God about this. Let's go to, let's go to Exodus chapter 3, verse 9. Because on the side of the oppressor, there's power. Because Pharaoh thinks he's, he's big. Because you look at the word tyrant, you'll see a Pharaoh. It means Pharaoh. Meaning, I don't care how you feel. Deal with it. Yeah, they said there's no systemic racism. That's what they said. 
Because they're, what they're doing, they're gaslighting you. They're changing the narration. They know what happened in this country. After the Emancipation Proclamation, they know what happened. They know what happened with the land. They know what happened with the FHA. They know what happened with the redlining with the banks. They know what happened with the restrictive covenants. They know what happened when they moved and created the suburbs for the white people and left the blacks in the um in and created the slums. They created the ghettos. After they burned the businesses. After the states. And the governors and the presidents sat back and watched the domestic terrorism that was done against our people in this country. But some people, they try to run away from being black. They scared to talk about it. We got to stop with the silence of the lambs. After they killed Martin Luther King, many ministers, they don't even want to talk about the social justice anymore. They don't want to talk about righteousness. They don't want to talk about the care. They don't want to talk about the abuses that's happening to their people. They don't want to talk about it. Out of fear, what did they do? They came with this prosperity teaching, which they got from these false ministers. Because you can't say you Christian man and you was a killer. You can't say you Christian and you hate your brother. You can't say you Christian and you didn't open your mouth for the oppressed. You cannot say you Christian in this book, not in God's word. Exodus chapter 3 verse 9. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have seen, I have also seen the oppressions wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. So God saw the oppressions where the Egyptians oppressed the children of Israel. We back in the roll again. So you can't fake it. Everybody where they are, this is already staged. You've already been cast into a roll. Now mankind is being tried. Are you going to obey the gospel of Christ or not? The kings and all that in authority, they, may, they must humble themselves and come into the righteous and the love, man. And stop acting like you don't know. You don't know that people are being oppressed. That they're being crushed. That they're being pressed and burdened spiritually and mentally. You know. That they're being weighed down heavily upon. You know. Why you know? Because they've been telling you for hundreds of years. That's how you know. That my people, that the black man in America has been oppressed, been weighed down and burdened spiritually and mentally and you made fun of it and you enjoyed it. But the redemption is at hand. To burden and to crush by the abuse of power and authority to treat a person in a cruel and unfair way is to oppress. To treat a person in a cruel and in an unfair way is to oppress. So we know what we're going through. We know we're being treated in a cruel and in an unfair way. To make someone feel sad and worried for a long period of time is to oppress. And brothers and sisters, you've been sad and you've been worried for a long period of time, but God is going to deal with this, man. There ain't no question. Unjust and cruel exercise of authority or power, a sense of being weighed down in body and in mind, to be depressed, to be grinded down, to be overwhelmed and swamped. So they know they're weighing you down in body and mind. They talk about, well, um, most of the people that died under COVID, they died under COVID disproportionately. It happened to the blacks. Why? Because of the health situation that they're dealing with. And they are in the front line of the essential working. They're aware. And it's affecting our health. They know. And many of our people don't have health care, but they know. Okay. It says the tears of such as were oppressed. 
and they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressor, there was power, meaning there's intimidation going on. There's threatening going on. Initially, the district attorney did not want to charge the officer. What did he say? Mike Freeman, he said, the county attorney, the county attorney, Mike Freeman, he said he condemned the action of Mike Chauvis as horrific and terrible. But he added that there was other evidence that doesn't support a criminal charge. Although we saw the knee on the neck, that does not support a criminal charge. Although there were three other officers holding him down. And that he, we had his life in our hand and we snuffed it out. We stifled it. Same thing with Eric Garner. I can't breathe. And the cop, he was just fired, just walked away. But what they don't understand, man, this is coming to judgment. And a lot of people did not understand about accountability. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear. Before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive of the things done in his body according to that which he have done, whether it be good or bad. So man is going to give account of himself to God. Account. You're going to answer for your actions and for your motives and why you did it. And what God deals with, he deals with your heart. He's going to step right into your heart. Today, Ron Paul was arguing about the statute dealing with lynchings. And Cory Booker said, you know his heart. You don't know Ron Paul's heart. You don't know his heart. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's coming out of his mouth tells you what's in his heart. You're not on that spiritual level like that to know the man's heart. That's why God said he's going to judge. He going to judge the hearts of men because God knows what's going on about the subtlety of speeches. They say one thing and do something else. But this is not hard. People are dying. People are suffering. And it's systematic destruction. The curtain has fallen. The nakedness is uncovered. And people see and they're not afraid to point out this is evil being done to the black people in America. That oppression is evil. Abuse of authority is evil. To be cruel is evil. To weigh people down mentally and spiritually is evil. To have them intimidated and want them operating in fear, it is evil. To have fun where you put on your police lights and have people scared, that it is evil. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 6, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled, meaning everybody sees it. I was glad to see some of my white brothers and sisters, yeah, other nations, Arabs, East Indians, Asians, standing, protesting, saying we, we acknowledge, meaning they came to the witness stand, they came to testify and they were not even subpoenaed. They said it's wrong. I've seen it. I, I observe it and it needs to stop. It was very encouraging. Why? Because it's a point in the reality of this world that mankind is actually seeing that they are a family. God made of one blood all families of men to dwell upon the face of the earth. That is what the apostles said in the book of Acts. Because God wanted the division to be at the end. He wanted the people, the people to actually live like family. And to put down the pettiness, put down the demonic behavior. But everybody saw it. Now, now look, as they use the media always to, to make the black people take the perp walk, the black women take the perp walk, now they're taking the perp walk. Now judges, Klobuchar, she's being looked at. All prosecutors, all DAs, they're being looked at now. But wait a minute, what's behind this? What's really going on? It said, therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more. As touching their wickedness. See, God said he's not holding his tongue no more. That's it. You crossed the line. And I'm happy that the people, they're not holding their tongue no more. They're lifting up their voice. 
May God cause those voices to move into actual actions of righteousness and care and equity and faith and hope and charity and kindness and gentleness. Which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them, and will receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold, my people. George Floyd, my people. Breonna Taylor, my people. Mm -hmm. Ahmaud Aubrey, my people. Eric Garner, my people. Trayvon Martin, my people. These are my people. And God is speaking about his people because you know there's a satanic warfare. People need to know what is your issue with black people, man? Why you feel that way? Even other immigrant nations that come from the from the from the from the Middle East, they come into the neighborhood and they're all abusive because they're following the protocol of the hatred that was set in white supremacy by the white man. That's what they did. And then when they're abusive or they try to take advantage of us or the front, we say, you know, you shouldn't do that. They call the police and say we're being aggressive. But God said, I will surely avenge them. Be all my people is led as a flock to the slaughter because people think that it's okay to kill somebody because they don't have an army. They don't have no family in the police department. They don't have no family that's notable, a congressman or a senator. They think that's okay. But I love how God is righteous and Christ is king. He said, my people is led like a flock to the slaughter. But you ain't going to keep killing them like this. I'm stepping in. So the Lord going to step in. He going to move on people's dreams. He going to move on people's families. He going to move in wrath. He going to move in storms. He going to move in more plagues. He going to move without a question. Because it depends on where you put your cry. Because this cry, Christ going to move, it's going to be action. He's going to move. So we can rest assured. Avenge not yourself. Brother said, y'all don't need to be looting. Man, God has better things provided for us. Rest assured. Also, yesterday, David McAtee, barbecuing. In Louisville, in Kentucky, the cops came to disperse the people. How should that be done? Yes, I'm showing the spirit of oppression is all over this police department of this country. They under a deep satanic spirit where they where they have to be abusive. They have to intimidate. They gotta crush. They gotta burden. They gotta put you in fear. That's what they want to do. They want to weigh your mind down. And they want to create a chaotic situation so you can what? Move rash. That's why there's no more com really community policing. That's why the majority of policemen don't live in the, in the neighborhoods that they police. So they can be what? They can be insens insensitive to you. What should have been done with that barbecue? It's very simple. If the people are there... At a restaurant buying food, the commanding officer should have walked to the owner and told him, listen, you got to close this up now. The people got to go. We need this crowd to be dispersed. Very simple. What did they do? What did the officers do? Instead of speaking to McAtee, they started pepper spraying the people. Firing, knowing that, that they're firing that pepper spray and firing those rubber bullets. What has happened there? It sounds like gunshots going off. People have lost their eye with them doing it because they're firing it right in your face. Why are you firing it in a person's face? Because I don't care about your life. So it could have been easily handled. Easily handled. So they said that he came out and he fired a gun. But look... We always need to look at the cause and how it's being handled. If it was a white person's business, the, the, the officer would have went there and said, I know Dave, let me go talk to him. Hey Dave, what's happening, man? The people got to go. 
See, friendly. But when they're dealing with you from a position of enmity and hostility, then enmity and hostility always leads to hurt and pain. And death, that's what it does. And damages. So they killed him and his family's crying. But mind you, in the same way, mind you, Brianna Taylor got killed in her. In her house. In her bed. That's what's going on in this country. The oppressions. But God said they're going to give account. Accountability is an obligation and willingness to accept responsibility and to account for one's action. A statement explaining one's conduct ex ex and, and explaining one's reasons and causes and motives. See, where is the accountability? The statement explaining your conduct, your conduct, your reasons, the causes, and the motives. To furnish a justifying analysis and explanation. And what has happened is they put the lawyers behind and back up the officers no matter what they do. If they kill somebody, if they kill a citizen they're there to protect, they, gotta, they have a, a whole military of officers, man, the top firms to make sure they get off. That's what they do. That's what you don't see. And the judges are being spoken to. To all the white allies, you need to talk to your parents, your cousins. Your nieces, your nephews, your uncles. That's in collusion because they've all been complicit. But it's been going on for a long time. And you act like you don't know. I don't know what's going on. There's no systemic racism. Because you're not a victim. That's why you're saying that. Because you're not being ambushed. Because you're not being thwarted. Because you're not being resisted. Because you're not being opposed. Because it's not happening to you. Because, but it shows you a diminished and a, and a depraved mental state. If somebody's telling you they're being victimized, you're not looking into it. And there are many universities that have looked into it and showed the facts. But you're denying the evidence because you don't want to change. Proverbs 31 verse 8. Because God said he's seen the cry. He's seen it. Yeah. Open thy mouth, the silence of the land. It says, open thy mouth. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy, meaning you're supposed to speak up. The white churches have been silent on this. They said they're only going to be dealing with textualization and history. They, they abandoned the social justice. They abandoned love thy neighbor as thyself. They abandoned he to have this world's good and see if his brother have need. How dwelleth and shutteth up his bowels of compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in him. They abandoned that every member should have the same care one of another. They abandon honor all men. They abandon speak evil of no man to be no brawlers. They abandon be careful to maintain good works. They abandon this long time. They abandon as you would have men do to you, do you even unto them. This is the law and this is the prophets. They have abandoned that. So you've never been ministry. That ain't no ministry that you're in. You're just talking. Because the ministry of the gospel of Christ deals with fruit bearing. You got to bear the fruit. You got to show the divine love. You got to show Christ's character. You got to show the kindness. And you got to open your mouth. For the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. And plead. And plead the cause of the poor and needy. That is what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be silent ministers. You ain't supposed to be silent. You're not supposed to sit back and see what's going on and don't say anything. God said, open your mouth. That's the word. Christ, when the woman was caught in the very act of adultery, when they wanted to stone her, Christ opened his mouth. He showed you what you're supposed to do. So you can't be silent. 
You got to open your mouth. You got to speak up. And you brothers and sisters, don't suffer in silence anymore. Don't cry. Don't sit back. No, speak up. Where you've been victimized, where you've been abused, let your testimony go on record. Let people know. And white America, you're going to have to repent and believe the gospel. Because the wrath of God is coming. Because in Romans chapter 1 verse 18, it tells you clearly what it, what it says. Romans chapter 1 verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So nobody don't have excuse. You know it's wrong. That's why God said he's going to bring the wrath. That's why man is being given opportunity. To, to what? To repent. God said he's not willing that any should perish, but it all should come to repentance. When you're dealing with repentance, you're actually dealing with compunction. You're actually dealing with remorse and being sorrowful about your own wrongdoing. You can't operate like a narcissist. And act like you're not involved. You're all involved. Everybody on the planet Earth is involved. And I heard a minister say, um, T.D. Jake say this. He said to the um, Tim Lentz, Oh, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't want to make anybody feel guilty. If they're wrong, they got to feel guilty. How are you going to change? If you sit back, if you're complicit, you're supposed to feel guilty. See, you can't play with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Christ said, when the Holy Spirit has come, it will reprove the world of sin. That's what it says. So when the Holy Spirit is reproving you, it shows you where you're going wrong. And the guilt, you need to feel the guilt because guilt brings you into the godly sorrow and the godly sorrow works repentance to salvation. How are you going to deal with repentance if you don't see your own personal guilt? You got to stop playing with these people because the white man don't want to feel guilty, but he's, he did it. He's doing it. He, he framed mischief by law. He wrote the destruction into his legislation. In 1906, they wrote the destruction of black businesses into legislation. They framed mischief by law. In the New Deal, it was written into legislation. They framed mischief by law to cut the blacks out, to disenfranchise them, and to, in 1954 and, and 53 to run the um, highways through their towns. And this, they did this. It was done by law. So you got to open your mouth, man. Because Christ already said, Blessed are the poor, there's the kingdom. They're going to get the kingdom. We ain't got to worry about it. We got to just believe the gospel, stay in the righteousness, walk in the grace, eat Christ's flesh, drink his blood. As you would have been due to you, do ye even unto them. This is the law and the prophets. Live righteously in this world. Eat the word. Because this is spiritual. This, because you need spiritual protection against these evil forces and evil people. They don't mean you no good. And they say, why are you talking like that? Brother and sister, you got to stop, man. Why would you tell somebody that's being abused that has faced death at the hand of the police department many times? That had AK-47s pulled on their whole family because of what? Because we had a Karen make a false call when I was in Philadelphia. Yeah, made a false call. And called the cops while I was in the Boston market in Philadelphia. About four years ago. And I pick my head up. And an Asian cop has a gun right in my eye. And assault rifles pointed at the van, a U-Haul van I was driving. Yeah. With my family in there, my nephew. So I know about the threat. I know about the oppression. I said, officer, you're making a mistake. You don't know what you're doing, but you're making a mistake. I had my hand on the steering wheel. He told me, he's screaming, put your hand on the steering wheel. I said, my hand is on the steering wheel. And he said he came there because he got a phone call. 
that a black man kidnapped some children. So the 10 police cars came into the parking lot. Surrounded the vehicle with all their weapons drawn. With assault weapons drawn. And when they saw they were wrong, they did not apologize. It's been going on. To the family of George Floyd, the Lord bless you and keep you. We're looking for the resurrection. To the family of Breonna Taylor, the Lord bless you and keep you. We're looking for the resurrection. May the Lord comfort you and keep you. To the family of Ahmaud Aubrey, may the Lord bless you and keep you. To the family of David at McAtee, may the Lord bless you and keep you, man, and comfort your families in these days. And to all the hundreds and thousands of people that have been killed by this system of evil and system of oppression, what they're calling government, because oppression is not government, it's just abuse. That's what it is. May God keep you and comfort you. May Christ rend the heavens and come down. Because when they look at our faces, they know. They know we're oppressed and they laugh. But Christ said, right now you have sorrow, but your sorrow shall be turned to joy. <laughs> Turn to joy. In Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. Let's go over here. You can't be silent. We're going to move through this. It said I considered. I considered. All the oppressions that are done under the sun. So which means. Although he was a king. Although he was an authority. Although he had power. Although he had gold like tin and silver like lead. He was looking how other people were being treated. He was concerned with the welfare of the world. So you can't be indifferent. And we know. People don't care how we feel, but God cares how we feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's read um, Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, go, And the Lord said unto me, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So God is looking at who's 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 sighing and crying for the abominations that's being done in the midst thereof. That's what all the protesting is about. Because there's a spiritual move being done in people's mind and in their hearts that they're sighing and they're crying, saying, This is wrong. But where are the judges? Where's the executive order to deal with all this stuff that's been going on for hundreds of years? Where's it at? Because they expected a riot. But this time, what did they do? They actually shot at reporters, pepper sprayed reporters, knocked them down, hit them with shields, meaning you should sh you shouldn't be here. Showing what we're doing. Because a dark spirit is on this country right now, man. It's been there. It's getting darker and more sadistic and more evil. Look what's going on. You got to resist the evil and choose the good. Christ said, be not overcome with the evil. Because it's a spirit that comes to overcome your mind. It said, but overcome the evil with the good. That's what he's showing you. Set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and cry. Because the Lord is watching this. Because in the fall of Jerusalem, before the children of Israel went into captivity, God watched how you feel about this, this abuse of people and the abuse of authority. He's watching. So this country, you need to look at, God is watching your indifference. And he's marking it down. 
And then he says, set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst of. Meaning, they're not treating them right. They're not dealing justly. They're not being holy. They're not being sanctified. They're not walking in the righteous care. And it says, and to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go after them through the midst of the city and smite and let not your eyes spare. Now they have pity. The angels came in and took the city down. So what did Christ say? He's going to come with his mighty angels. He's coming with the mighty angels. This country is going to be judged just like how Egypt was judged. They got their military power. They got their might. Yeah, but here's something. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because they're not stopping. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed. Because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. The heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. The heart of the son of men is fully set in them. To do evil. It tells you with the Egyptians. It said the malice was bred in them. I mean they enjoyed the killing. They enjoyed the hatred. They enjoyed ruling over people with rigor. Having hot choleric tempers. They enjoyed it. That's what the Egyptians did. That's what God called. This whole country is under the spirit of Egypt. That's a, that's a spirit that's over this country. They're not dealing with the spirit of Christ and care. The scripture says the meekness and gentleness of Christ. They're not dealing with that. The country is not operating in the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ at all. Because that spirit is the spirit of meekness and gentleness and holiness and care and equity and sanctification and justice. Make it right. They're not, they have not been dealing with that because you don't understand what happened in the early 1900s with the spiritualism and in the spiritualism that went down in this country. A lot of white families was visited by demonic forces. Go look it up. They were being dispirited because it's a spiritual temptation. Once you come into authority, the spiritual forces move on you. They move to emasculate you or they move to make you mean and tyrannical. That's what it was telling you this. Christ said he's wrestled not against flesh and blood. He's letting people know because man is dealing with a spiritual battle upon the earth after the fall of Adam. So of what spirit you're going to walk in? I mean, are you going to be your brother's keeper or not? But because sentence and gets an evil work is not speedily executed. It says, Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Fully set in them to hurt. Fully set in them to kill. Fully set in them, in them to lie. Fully set in them to, to gaslight. To act like we don't know. We don't know what's going on. You know. You're educated. You went to universities. There's many scholars that have really, that have researches and evidence. How you don't know and the victims are talking? How don't you know? How don't you know and the people are rioting? They know. In Germany they know. In France they know. They know. But how you don't know in America? How you don't know? You don't know how you don't know. You do know. you mocking their pain. You're mocking their mourning. Because you do know. Rush Limbaugh was on the Breakfast Club saying, oh, well, um, I don't believe there's any systematic, systemic racism, but he knows about the FHA. He knows about how they made sure that we didn't have no land. They know that. How white immigrants that came from Europe was given acres of land to settle them. Because if you don't really have land, you don't have the ability to accumulate wealth. They, they knew that. That's why... Um, George Washington had days reported he had a hundred thousand acres of land. Thomas Jefferson, thousands, hundred thousand acres of land. Why did they have all that land? Come on, you have the you need land to really have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to prosper in this kind of world. You need land. But the FHA, what the federal government did under FDR and the New Deal, they relegated us to the slums. And let me read this right here. Um, quarantine. Let's talk about quarantine. I'm going to read this quote to you. The blacks should be quarantined to isolated slums in order to reduce the incidences of civil disturbances and to prevent the spread of communicable diseases. 
into nearby white neighborhoods and to protect property value. This was said by the Baltimore mayor, Barry Mahal, 1910, that the blacks should be quarantined to quarantined in isolated slums. Isn't that something that we're living in a quarantine now? And he said the blacks should be quarantined in isolated slums in order to reduce the incidence of civil disturbances. Now, the civil disturbances was what? That the whites in this country was angry about the growth and the prosperity of black merchants, businessmen, um, and the black community. They were angry about it. So it brought up civil disturbances. They went around from town to town and burned the towns. And the police and the fire department sat back and watched it go down and participated. This is American history. You see how bold the Baltimore mayor, mayor was? The blacks should be quarantined and isolated in slums in order to reduce the incidence of civil disturbances. Baltimore racial zoning campaign was an advertisement done in the paper where it said, save your home from invasion, vote segregation. The X shows the houses that are now occupied by Negroes. 1934, creating the standard mortgages. 1944, the GI Bill. 1953, the Federal Housing Act. 1954, the justification of using, using eminent domain in order to do what? To, to, they call it blight removal in order to take away houses. But this is 54. But the New Deal was supposed to deal, supposed to be a new deal to fix all of America. Many blacks was relocated under the so-called urban renewal into overcrowded neighborhoods. But at this time, during the New Deal, there was a suburban growth. And they said the properties that were given, the FHA loans did this. What Roosevelt did under the FHA loans? He, that's why you saw that there were a lot of apartments. You see some of these apartments in the neighborhoods. You said whites used to live here. Where did they move to? They said they moved to the suburbs. But they moved to the suburbs because the suburbs were created for them to live in. And the FHA loans was given to the develop. The, first of all, the developers got together with the U.S. government. And the U.S. government said that these houses that you're making, we're going to guarantee the loans. But they cannot, they cannot be occupied. And it said, the properties shall continue to be occupied by the same social class and racial classes. Because they said a change. In social or racial occupancy will contribute to the instability and the decline of the values of the houses. So what they did is this. They said these houses that we're making in the suburbs, we don't want no blacks there. That's why you see the whites move from the inner city into where? Into the suburbs. Because this was all subsidized by the government and the government told the developers if, and told the banks if they default on the loans told the banks if they default on the loans we guarantee in the loans don't worry about it all the while for years over 50 years 60 years and to this day blacks have trouble getting loans because of the what it because of the, the rezoning and the redlining, they did crayons and said, well, you shouldn't lend to this person, lend to that person. This is what destroyed our communities. Because we got to talk about our pain. We have to talk about what we're going through. We got to talk about what happened to us and how we've been targeted. And you have to open up your voice. You have to open your mouth against such a uh, point to destruction because brothers and sisters there's a time where change has to be done for the next succeeding generations and you have to stand in the faith of the gospel and not be afraid now in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 18 it says a wrathful man stirreth up strife but he that is slow to anger a piece of strife so what they were using they use incendiary even the 
media was part of the incendiary words to stir up strife, to bring up, to raise up the racial hatred in this country. Like they, like they said Trump was doing, defiding the country. There's going to be accountability for what was done in the black community, in the black neighborhood, because there's culpability. In us looking at the culpability, do you're seeing that it merits the protesting that's going on in this country and throughout the world. It's showing that it merits blame, that the country in itself is at fault. That's what the people are saying for what the harm and the injury and they deserve to be openly censured. That's why there's a protest. There's a protest, a protest is a public expression of objection and disapproval and dissent towards an idea, a course of action and a system. So that is what the people are saying. That's what the people are saying. That's what must be understood. They're protesting the oppression. And then when you have a protest, what happened, people, some people are thrown off and move into herd behavior and other people, what they do, they become opportunistic during the protests. This is what happened with the yellow jackets in France. This is what happens in protests. You end up from going from a protest and then you have some riots that's going on. But governments are aware of this when they're being overly oppressive and mean and abusing the people they're aware. That's why the police department are trained when you get out of line. But the truth of the matter, when you're destroying a community and you have the word of God, America said they're set up upon a Judeo-Christian principle. Acts chapter 17 said God made of one blood all families of men to dwell upon the face of the earth. So this three-fifths of a man about a vote is all wickedness and all evil. Because we all brothers. Now, Romans chapter 14 verse 10, but why doest thou judge thy brother? Meaning, why are you condemning your brother? Why doest thou judge thy brother? When the civil war happened in this country, between the Confederates and the North. After the Civil War, the North gave the Confederates, the South, amnesty. He said, we can forget about what happened. You can have back your land. Oh yeah, you can have the slaves also too. Yeah. And then the Jim Crow came in. So we could understand. And we can look at this. How this is a culminating situation. Why doest thou judge thy brother? And why doest thou set it not thy brother? For we shall, st we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. That is what it says. Every one of us going to give account of himself to God because God going to make you answer for your actions, your conduct, and your motives. And remember, God said in the word, he's of no respect of persons. He don't care if you call yourself, a people call you a king or a bishop or a judge or a lawyer or an officer. It don't make a difference to God. You a creature, you man. Every one of us going to give account of himself to God. Let me get the word account again. Because God is showing us this. You're going to have to, by careful examination, you're going to have to furnish an explanation for your actions and your motives to God. And he's judging the heart. So the scripture warns us, it said, let us not, let us therefore let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Meaning this, man is supposed to be trying to aid and help and benefit each other. 
instead of setting up plots that was done against us. After the Jim Crow, they wasn't done. Mm -mm. Another plan, another scheme. We're going we to fix them. We're going to have riots. We're going to raise the racial tensions. That's what we're going to do. Oh, they're fighting back after 1919? Okay, we got another move we're going to do. We're going to disenfranchise and we're going to burn up their towns. We're going to destabilize their communities. Oh, what are they doing? Or what? Oh, the communities are already dilapidated? Good. Now that they're dilapidated, we're going to get a new deal. We're going to move the whites into the suburbs. Yeah, because after the Civil War, there was a great, what? The Great Migration, where, the, where a lot of blacks was moving into the North now. They're like, oh yeah? You moving into the, are you moving into the North? Okay, we're going to fix you. We're going to move the whites from the inner city of the North into the suburbs. And we're going to let... The, the, the towns and the communities of the north and the tenements and the buildings, we're going to let it fall. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to make it illegal for you to move into the suburbs. And illegal for the banks to give you loans. That's when they first started with the FHA, the Federal Housing Act and the Federal Housing Authority. What they did... They said only 1% of those loans was given to black people. Devastation. They created the ghettos. And on top of all that evil that was done in this country, you shooting and killing us in, in, in the isolated quarantine areas you put us in. You're going to give account of yourself to God. Let's go to Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35, and let's read verse 9. By reason of the multitude of the oppressions, by reason of the multitude of the oppressions, Job 35 verse 9. By reason of the multitude of the oppressions, by the, because the people are being crushed, because they're being burdened down. We look. We looked at the word um, oppressed in the, into the Latin. It tells you what it says to stifle. Because the knee on the neck, that's oppression. By reason of the multitude of the oppression, they make the, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty, because the arm of the mighty, men, they have the government, they have the authority, and everybody's moving in the injustice. Because the civil rights movement was really a movement into righteousness. That you're supposed to be dealing with righteousness and justice. Because when you look at the Declaration of Independence, we're going to talk about that too. The same crimes that was done by England to the colonies is what the colonies did to us. Same crimes to this day. I'm going to read it. But let me read this first. By reason of the multitude of the oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry, to cry out, meaning every tear has generations of pain in it. Every tear says, I can't take this no more. Every tear means, please stop. That's what tears say. Please stop. Tears are involuntary. They just come up. These are real sincere tears. This is not no acting. These are t real tears because of the pain and the grief. And the mourning. Because of we know there are specific losses. Specific losses. The mother to the oppressions. Eric Garner. John Crawford. Michael Brown. Ezel Ford, Dante Parker, Michelle Custix, Laquan McDonald, George Mann, T Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Romaine Brisbane, Jermaine Reed, 
Michael Abijade, Frank Smith, Natasha McKinnon, Tony Robinson, Anthony Hill, Maya Hall, Philip White, Eric Harris, by reason of the multitude of the oppression. These are all people that was killed. You know why they're protesting. By reason of the multitude of the op of oppressions, they make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. And what is supposed to be said is this. When, when someone is killed, what must be understood, there's an explosion in the spiritual world. So let's deal with the multitude of the oppressions. What's going on here? They protesting? We're going to talk about why. The families that are crying. The many funerals. And people are trying to figure out, well, blacks are killing blacks. Let, let's deal with that. If you go back to the 1900s, the 1800s, the 1700s, you didn't see that. But what happens is, in Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 10, let's look at this for a second. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, let's read from verse 2. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king destroyeth his people. Again, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So the issue is not only with the officers, the issue is because of the judges. That's why the officers are moving the way they're moving. By reason of the multitude of oppressions, they make the cry of the oppressed because of the judges, because of the lawyers. They tell you about the coercing, coercive um, ways in which the district attorney and the police officers make people confess the crime, something they didn't even do. That's what the Innocence Project is all about. So they know it's well documented. So what happens is, when even when you read in the book of Exodus, when Moses saw an Egyptian smiting his brother, then what is the aftermath of that type of that type of constant abusive behavior? Then he saw what did he, Moses see after that? He saw two Hebrew men, two Israelites fighting each other because they set the precedence. Oppression sets the precedence that I want you to oppress one another like I'm oppressing your brother, you oppress your brother. So when you go into the root of the black on black crime, you have to go back to the white riots. You have to go back to the oppression and you have to go back to the hatred and the burning of the towns because when you show that you don't value a life constantly over and over in the hundreds of thousands of people that have been affected those that have been killed and those that have suffered. When you constantly show uh, this government does not value these people. It's a demonic, satanic, seductive, binding force you releasing Satan into the community. So don't complain about what's going on in Chicago. Go back and look at what the what the Irish did during the Chicago riots. Go back there. Where it wasn't that kind of black on black crime. Go back there and look. With in Philadelphia with Frank Rizzo, what he did there. Go look what happened before. When we used to have a, a community of love and people cared for each other. Well, go back before you brought the drugs into the community and you let it flourish. Go back before that. Before you dismantle the, the security that the people had when they congregated in the churches, go back before then. Go back. Before you dismantled it. Go back before integration. Go back before the miscegenation. Go back before the movie and the black exploitation and the map. Go back before that. Before you talk. Because you're looking at the results, but nobody's not talking about the seeds that was planted. All the hatred that was sown. Okay. So as a as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. And what man of man the rule of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Because it's the spirit that's being put forth. Otherwise, there's an error that proceeded from a ruler. If the ruler don't value the people, then the, the ruler brings the people into not valuing each other. Now, by reason of the by reason of 
the multitude of, oh, not a few, the multitude of oppressions, the multitude of riots, the multitude of crying and protests. There's been multitudes. They make the oppressed to cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty because you're being threatened. To, you better not say nothing. You better shut up. When Ahmad Aubrey was killed, they told his mother that he was killed. <laughs> While committing a burglary, the owner killed him. They told his mother that. And that his killing was justifiable in Georgia. Mind you, Georgia, so we can go deal with Georgia, in 19, 06, what did they do with the Georgia riots? Hmm. The massacre. They angry, black prosperity, black camaraderie, what did they do? They foment the racial tension, burning down towns, grabbing people off of, off of um, streetcars and beating them. 1899, Sam Holt. Sam Holes, after they killed him, they had his body, yeah, on display in a store, sending body, parts of his body that they killed him, parts of his body to different people. And the liver and the heart went to the governor of Georgia. So, Keisha Lance Bottom should have been should have been more thoughtful when she was speaking to the people when the rioting began, because there's an undercurrent there of oppression and abuse. You can't come out scolding them. You need to speak to them. Look at how Christ approached the situation. You need to come down and show the love. Now you went down, you should have went down there from the beginning and showed yourself, you should have walked openly amongst the people and showed that you care. Because they're just crying out for attention. That's what they were doing all these, these days, years, months, centuries that this needs to stop. It's killing us. And you're trying to take away my hope. You're trying to tell me there's nothing to look forward to. You're trying to have me walk around in paranoia. So she was wrong how she approached that. Because you got to step down how Christ said. You got to step into the spiritual realm. In the spiritual care. And Christ said if you would love one another. Then would all men know. I mean that's how you're going to be recognized. You got to step down into the spiritual love. Because they've been neglected. The legislator in Atlanta is trying to was trying to take the airport from her and put it under state control. So she knows about how evil and undermining they are in Georgia. But to what end? By reason of the multitude of the oppressions, they make the cry. They make the oppressed to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, where is God my maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven. There they cry, but none give answer because of the pride of evil men. So why have the people protested? Because of the pride of evil men. Because evil men didn't answer all the complaining and the dilapidated communities. When I went to Indianapolis, when I went to Indiana, when I went to Detroit, when I went to Chicago, it put me into a state of shock. That I was like, what happened to this place, man? It still looks this way? 
they have the deliberate haves and have nots, and that's just the way it is. It said because of the pride of evil men. Because you can never look at that kind of situation and be satisfied. You the rich man and you laughing at Lazarus, but there's an end to this whole thing, man. There's an end to it. Verse 10, but none said, where is God, my maker? And that's what God wants us to say. Brother and sister, we got to say, where is God, our maker? Christ said, men... Ought to always pray and not to faint. Luke chapter 18. And he spake a parable. Meaning this deep meaning in this. To the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I mean you need God to step to them in their heart and in their mind. You need the Lord to deal with them like how he dealt with the Assyrians. You need that. Because this is all demonic activity. To be that evil and that mean and that cruel. No, there's another influence going on here. This is beyond, this is inhumane. Saying there's, there was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me and mine adversaries. And he would not. He would not. For a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continually coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, Shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith upon the earth. We have to be in the faith that Christ is going to avenge this. And don't take matters into our own hand. You don't need to be looting nothing. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. You need to be there. You need to be looking for a city which has foundations. Whose builder and maker is God. Because they set the value on those products. And those possessions. But they don't feel valuable themselves. That's why they don't love one another. So once those vain things come into the community, now you in the vanity and boasting with each other. And what does it say in Job chapter 35? Verse 13, Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt not see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. Although many of our people are saying, man, God ain't going to help. Shh, don't you do that. Because mm -mm. you ain't going to tell God what he's going to do. Yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. Although many of our people are saying, man, God ain't going to help. Shh, don't you do that. Because mm -mm. you ain't going to tell God what he's going to do. It says judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. That's what God told Job. So you brothers and sisters, remember the patience of Job. His house was burned down. He lost his house and lost his children. But remember the patience. That God is very pitiful and of great and tender mercies. 